expo, I think. I missed one because I was doing something. Uh, but I went to the San Jose one, uh, the one here before this, and the one here today. Uh, and then I would do, I call these slideshows. Uh, then I would use a an overhead projector. Does anybody remember those yeah. with the plastic sheets? So every time I would just like do it. it, it each time it's a new show because I would just throw it on the floor and then scoop them up and then pile them up for the next show, and it would be a brand new experience each time. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see. Anyways, uh, I started out uh, as an editorial cartoonist. Um, every editorial cartoonist in the, in the country, pretty much in the history of editorial cartooning, has, uh, all right, has been uh, the editorial cartoonist at the college paper. Uh, and so uh, that was me um, at San Diego State University. But before that, I was uh, like drawing and being artistic runs in my family. Um, and I have a couple cousins in, uh, in, in Mazatlan that grew up, they're, they were painters, artists, graphic artists. Um, they taught me actually uh, some painting techniques. They had radio shows, they're very talented, they could sing. And they, uh, because of limited opportunities for artists in Mexico, they grew up to be CPAs, uh, which, whew, I'm lucky I grew up in San Diego, California, and I didn't have to be a certified public accountant. Uh, and so I, I, met, um, I met Chicano artists at a place called El Centro Cultural de la Raza in Balboa Park in San Diego, a place that had a, um, a, a program of uh, mural painting. Uh, they taught classes, and that's where I met Chicano artists who showed me that art, uh, basically Chicano art, could be not only a pretty picture, but also could have meaning uh, and it could have a political message. Uh, and so um, uh, I, I felt like, wow, I could really express myself in Chicano art. All art should be like that. Uh, and uh, I think anything else is frivolous, really. So um, I'm, an, I'm an old fart that way. OK, let's see if this thing goes. Yay! Oh, that's me and my dad. Uh, he's from Zacatecas. That's my mom. Um, uh, my mom, sort of like Melania Trump, uh, was uh, undocumented in the U.S. and worked without a work visa. Just like, sort of like Melania Trump. Not doing the same kind of work. My mom cleaned houses and uh, kept her clothes on. <laughs> Uh, I'm from uh, Lemon, I grew up in Lemon Grove, California. Has anybody ever heard of this place? My God. Uh, it, it, as you can see, it's a, a dystopian hellscape. Uh, we, we have a giant concrete lemon. That's our claim to fame. Uh, there's a, a couple of claim, claims to fame there. Uh, was the Lemon Grove incident is like the first uh, um, educational court case that went federal. Uh, in the U.S. Uh, involving students of color, um, you know, way before uh, Brown versus Board of Education. Um, but uh, uh, there I am, uh, <laughs> kindergarten. Uh, oh no, maybe that's the first grade. Cool Nehru jacket. Right? <laughs> uh, this is me. Uh, there used to be a work program for cholos. And uh, I just, I, uh, 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 it, it was at my high school, and, uh, or it was in the, for the county, but it was, it, 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 one of the sites was at my high school, and they would hire us during the summer just to, like, cut the grass on the hillsides and stuff. This is, like, pre-automated machinery and thing, tools, and we'd actually, like, use, like, these guys and stuff. Uh, anyway, so, uh, what, however you call them. Uh, so one day the coach said, uh, Hey, does anybody know how to draw here? And everybody pointed at me. And uh, I said, uh, we need a logo painted for the school mascot, which was sadly the uh, Scotty Dogs or whatever. <laughs> the Helix Highlanders, all right? That's my high school. So, uh, so I painted this uh, outside the uh, boys' gym. It's still there. It just gets repainted every 10 years or so. Uh, but I put my name, uh, uh, my real name on there. 
uh, just to take this photo so that I could show you in 35 years. Uh, and uh, the coach came by and says, you're, gonna, you're not leaving that on there, are you? I said, no, coach, don't worry about it. I painted it out. But, uh, and uh, I, I put it on Facebook, and people were like, nice pompadour. And I had to tell them, uh, that's a baseball cap. We wouldn't wear them flipped up, you know, it was the style. Uh, but anyway, that would be a really ugly pompadour. Uh, this me in Chicano Park. Uh, in San Diego, me at uh, Berkeley. I went to uh, graduate school at Berkeley after studying art, uh, and because I thought that architecture was a way you could save the world, but I was really wrong. <laughs> uh, but um, and here's uh, this is actually part of my Comic Con show, so uh, forgive me. That's uh, Sergio Aragones. You guys know Mad Magazine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's uh, he's just like an awesome cartoonist. He's always at Comic Con. I just drew this uh, yesterday, uh, and it's the Melania Crossing. I call her Mojada Trump. <laughs> so and that's his. I don't know. Some people offended by this. I'm like, come on, like uh, that's the mud flap girl, you know, from, from trucks. So it's not really like I didn't invent anything new. Uh, but I have. I, I think I am the cartoonist that used the the immigrant crossing sign the most. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to contact Guinness Book of World Records one day because I think I've done it like 30 times at least in my comics. Um, uh, here's some comics from Comic Con. Uh, ooh, look at it. Is that the Human Torch? Nah, it's just effing hot at Comic Con. It was like really hot. Over there. Uh, here's a fanatics in costume. Stormtroopers, cartoonish monsters, welcome to Comic-Con, no, Cleveland Republican National Convention. And, uh, editorial cartoonists will combine two different topics to come up with a new gag that usually helps. Here's Diablo Trump. Uh, and you, if you see, he's inspired by the, the Diablo on the Loteria cards. Uh, and you can see he has the demonic biker shorts <laughs> that are on the... Next time, look at the Loteria card, he has little biker shorts. Because, you know, decency. Uh, here's a... Uh, Pendejo Trump eating a taco bowl. I, uh, I was inspired by this to do this. That's oh. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, SNL, still no Latinos. Uh, Trump spoke again. Trump has made it very easy this year for me. Uh, oh, and just listen, this is the actual quote Melania Trump said. He is not racist or anti-immigrant. He wants to take care of the illegal immigrants so they are not here any longer. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, here she is after her speech, or at her speech, uh, Oscar and seven years ago. <laughs> Here she is, uh, immigrants come to this country and steal all our quotes. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, li these are li like sketches that I just do in my uh, sketchbook. And uh, this is a more finished piece. Uh, Mexico built the Trump wall for free. <laughs> the old uh, border, 1821 border. Uh, oh, look at this idiot. <laughs> Dressed as a wall. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, uh, El Chapo should build a tunnel through him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Super Hill versus Burn Man. Uh, here's Congress, uh, NRA. The AR-2016 Congress gun. Uh, and uh, of course, when uh, you post anything about gun control, there's always a guy that comes on and says, I, I posted this, and then it says, he has the, this like clip, the gun clip, extra clips available at the NRA. And then this guy goes on and says, oh my god, you call them clips. They're called magazines. God, they're so ignorant. Uh, the gun splainers are really. Uh, oh, uh, I did uh, this uh, cartoon during the the Brexit vote, and uh, if you guys you guys remember Andy Cap, does anybody know Andy Cap? Is this 
uh, comic, uh, cart comic strip character who was British, right? So I drew him, he kicked himself out of the bar, right? So it, I used him for uh, three strips in, uh, in my comic strip, La Cucaracha, which is a daily strip, it's political. Uh, and so I haven't told anybody in public yet, but uh, the, the owner of Andy Cap, the Mirror newspaper, in England sent me a cease and desist letter. And they were highly offended that I used Andy Cap in, uh, uh, in the strip. I make him like talk smack to the cucaracha and to Eddie, the other character. And he's all racist and he's like, blimey, where's, you know, he's so drunk. He doesn't, he thinks, he's in East LA, he thinks he's in London, right? And so uh, the whole strip goes on and on like that. So they write me this letter, and I, I fell out of my chair laughing because they were offended. That newspaper that owns Andy Cap supported, um, was opposed to the Brexit vote, right? So uh, uh, they were offended that way, and they were offended that I made him look racist. And I'm like, well, your character is a drunk wife beater who steals money out of his wife's purse. Like, what are you exactly worried about, right? Like, that's, that's stupid, but anyway. <laughs> Hillary Clinton emails. Oh. Uh, uh, police, uh, if you Ooh. notice up there, the guy is a little subtle. <laughs> uh, this is the day that the, the he, was it the Dallas police got shot, and, and then that week where it was just like police shootings, uh, it was just a horrible week. So I did it that everybody got shot. Uh, this is from that uh, truck attack in Paris, a terrorist attack. Just like 2016 is a really crappy year. Um, I like to do memes, like this one. <laughs> this is uh, uh, all the summer congressional uh, Republican uh, uh, interns, right? Where everybody online was like, find the minority. Okay, there's that Asian guy. <laughs> and then up here, there's like, there's a black lady right there, young black woman right up there. And uh, I think that's it. They were probably photoshopped. They were probably, yeah, they were photoshopped in. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, here's uh, Arizona uh, uh, cross, uh, Liberty Crossing. Of, um, I posted this cartoon, uh, like I said, I've done like 20, 30 cartoons using the Immigrant Crossing sign. I put this uh, on Facebook and one of my friends was like, ah, that's a, that's a dope cartoon, but why do you have three pregnant punk rockers? <laughs> uh, and so again, I used this, I, I actually, this was a cartoon originally and then I built uh, a, an actual border crossing sign. Um, almost to, to scale, well, to, to size, a real size. It's, pr it's pretty big, it's like four feet across. And use it as my Dia de los Muertos altar uh, in downtown LA, Grand Park. Uh, and then, uh, so cartoons, I'm gonna try to blast through because I know we have limited time. Uh, Dream, I like, I uh, support the Dream Act students. Uh, again, Donald oh. Trump's made my year very easy. <laughs> There's that hair, it's so easy to do, turn it into something funny. Uh, instead of uh, what it is, which is something funny. Mm -hmm. um, the Trump piñata. Uh, this is one of my first uh, Trump cartoons. Um, Trump GOP. Uh, miscongeniality. I know, it's disgusting. It's after lunch, though. So. Um, this is my favorite, I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> And this just ran in uh, in Brazil in their biggest uh, like their their version of the New Yorker. Mm. Uh, and uh, I have to do my editorial cartoons in English and Spanish, so I love doing them sin palabras like this. So it's just no transla extra translation needed. Trompa cabra. <laughs> The most popular Halloween costumes last year were Donald Trump and Chapo Guzman. And here they are playing on Halloween. Here's a Chapo Guzman's escape plan.
This is Donald Trump's hairdresser. <laughs> Rogelio. <laughs> uh, and this is the day the uh, Confederate flag came down. Uh, Harriet Tubman uh, being on the $20 bill. Uh, the Pope after uh, one week in the U.S. <laughs> The Holy Family picking crops. Um, a lot of police brutality, sadly, last year and this year. Um, I did this uh, after a guy got shot in the back, but the, it was caught on video. Um, and, uh, he reached for my gun. I, I, uh, this was posted on Facebook, and, and somebody told me, oh, my cop friend told me, this is racist against cops. <laughs> said, what? <laughs> are, are cops like Mr. Fantastic? You know, like rubbery arms? Uh, this is an attack of the 14 year old black girl. This is after that pool party in, in Texas, uh, McKinney, Texas, near uh, Dallas, uh, where the cop. I have a 12 year old, and so when, you, you just have to watch the video of the cop digging his knee into the back of a 14-year-old girl in a bikini from a pool party, and just to be disgusted by this police brutality. And La Cucaracha is my uh, comic strip. Uh, it's been running about 13 years, uh, and I get lots of hate mail. Um, these are, uh, most of the hate mail I get from the San Diego Union Tribune, from the home paper, uh, and they're pretty funny. I think there's a group of like senior citizens that write every week and to tell me that I'm satanic, you know? Uh, and it's really funny. Um, I'll tell one story. I had an editor who said, uh, 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 he contacted one of the letter writers. He goes, I swear, Lalo, they are all writing. It's the same group of people. They all write from the same address. It's a convalescent home. And apparently, like, they, they take a class in writing letters to uh, attack you in the newspaper, right? It's like an activity, like making baskets or pots, <laughs> all right? So, so there was one, the, one of the uh, uh, older guys, uh, one of the, the senior citizens was a, a, a Latino, and he's, he, the editor called him to clarify something on the letter, and he's, he, 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 um, he was complaining about a strip that I did, um, a series, I used to do like uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not, but I would call it Ripley's um, Believe It or Nalgas. Right? And so he said that I was a pornographer for doing the, for using the word nagas, right? And so the guy said, well, you want me to tell Lalo to give me your feedback? You know, you have any suggestions for it? Because I talk to him all the time. And he goes, really? Yes, you, you tell Lalo this. Instead of saying, believe it or nagas, change it to believe it or culo. <laughs> Isn't that worse? That's gross, right? <laughs> I, I get people are amazed because I started to post my hate mail online uh, because now it's so easy. You know, anybody can write you an email or, or post um, comment section. But uh, uh, in the glory days of getting letters to the newspapers, the editor, uh, my the best letter I ever got had uh, told, the guy just told me, um, go back to Africa. <laughs> and, uh, and I was, actually, I was very honored. Uh, <laughs> so that's how much that guy hated me. But, uh, I do paintings, uh, you know, uh, on various themes. He's a modern day uh, borracho, <laughs> calling Uber. <laughs> Uh, the uh, I, I like Star Wars. Uh, and, uh, this is the the Virgin of Guadalea. Um, Darth Chuko. Uh, use uh, uh, Darth Vader and Star Wars characters in uh, in in the uh, Color Sundays. A uh, low Vader. Um, this is my car when I was like 18. I bought my first car I ever bought, a 1970 Calbug. Really cool book, cool car. Uh, but anyway, uh, here's Eddie, uh, which is uh, kind of me in the strip. He pulls up, sees this guy. <laughs> nice hydraulics. <laughs> uh, Chepe and Pepe are two of my favorite characters from the strip. They're two viejitos that used to live in my neighborhood. They used to walk around. 
uh, and just hang out all day. Uh, and uh, here's Chepa says, uh, it was recently National Tequila Day, or as I call it, morning time. <laughs> uh, Latinos, the movie starring Christian Bale, Scarlett Johansson, Ben Affleck, Sigourney Weaver, Bradley Cooper, and Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> And, and just about every Latino would go see it, too. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> and that's Migra Mouse. Migra Mouse was my first cartoon I ever did that really went viral. What time is it? <laughs> Sorry, oh, we're good. We're good. Uh, and uh, this was during the Prop 187 era, the first, like, the granddaddy of the anti-immigrant, anti-Mexican immigrant laws. And the, the Walt Disney Company had given money to Pete Wilson, the governor who was running on this. Mm -hmm. Uh, thing. Uh, although the, they gave money to his opponent too because that's what giant corporations do. But uh, this, this cartoon went all over the planet and it was before the internet. Uh, and then re uh, recently in uh, 2014 I think, uh, the, the Disney company tried to trademark the term Dia de los Muertos because uh, a stupid lawyer thought that was a good idea. Uh, because they're doing a, a, a movie on uh, Day of the Dead and so I did uh, Muerto Mouse. Uh, I drew it the afternoon that the, the news came out the night before. By that afternoon, I drew it, posted it. By 6 o'clock that night, Disney uh, had withdrawn the trademark application for Dia de los Muertos yogurt and uh, you know, <laughs> plastic toys. Uh, but, uh, and uh, you know, uh, someone else had set up a, a giant uh, petition that just exploded. Uh, and so they, uh, I found out later that it was, my theory was right, it was Disney lawyers that thought it would be a good idea because uh, what happened, uh, you know, what is, what is the reason we're here, you know, to promote diversity in our industry? Uh, same thing in every industry, especially in Hollywood and even in the legal departments at Disney. Uh, there was no, uh, you know, no Latino that could speak up and go, you know, that might not be a good idea to try to trademark a whole country's, uh, a whole, a whole, series of countries uh, uh, holiday that's, you know, might be two to 20,000 years old, you know, you don't know. So uh, anyway, uh, and, uh, and then ironically, in a twist of fate, uh, I was asked by the Pixar people that are doing the movie to be a consultant on that Day of the Dead movie. Uh, and my favorite headline of it, and of course I accept it because uh, I, I'm all about trying to, you know, make sure that Disney doesn't make Aladdin for Mexicans on this movie. Uh, and uh, although I got a lot of crap for it, but I get a lot of crap all day long, so it doesn't really bother me. Let me see. And we'll get more on that, but uh, here's one of my favorite cartoons. Um, you see the day 2002? Uh, Native American football fan, but I'm honoring you, dude. And then on Twitter, somebody posted this <laughs> next to my cartoon and said, Look at what uh, Lava Caras predicted. Uh, this happened in 2014, and this was drawn in 2002. But uh, it's kind of it's crazy, it's really weird. It's one of my, uh, probably my most popular cartoon, Show Me Your Papers, with uh, Geronimo <coughs> asking for everyone's papers. I found an unattended board patrol truck in El Paso, <laughs> so uh, I decorated it. <laughs> Here's Dora. Oh. Uh, taco cart guy is the most popular character in my strip uh, because everybody loves tacos. He doesn't even say anything, he just stands in front of gags like this. Here he is at the Olympics. And actually right now if you see my comic strip, uh, you can see it in the LA Times or online, uh, we're doing the Taco Olympics. So it's like various events involving tacos. It's just pretty silly. He'll set up anywhere. <laughs> He gave a TED talk. <laughs> uh, and uh, here's some uh, comics I did for The Simpsons. Uh, I did a story called Bart Speaks Spanish. It's uh, Bongo Comics. And what happens is Bart, 
goes to the park because his mom kicks him out of the house because he won't stop eating junk food. So he goes to the park, finds a Mexican kid's birthday party, and he dives for the piñata, uh, and he gets hit in the head with a piñata stick. He wakes up in the hospital. He can only speak Spanish. <laughs> so he gets kicked out of Springfield Elementary and gets sent to East Springfield Elementary. <laughs> and all kinds of... It, it ends in a Lucha Libre fight, of course. <laughs> of course. Um, in the 2012 elections, I created this character, Mexican Mitt Romney, uh, on Twitter. And it became a very popular uh, parody account. <clears throat> Name one of the top ten uh, parodies of the political season. Uh, he was, uh, because Mitt Romney was so boring, and his father was born in Chihuahua uh, on, a, on a rancho, which is Spanish for Mormon polygamous compound. Uh, and so he has like 200 abuelitas, right? Uh, and so uh, Mexican Mitt Romney's catchphrase was, uh, I am the Juan Percent. Uh, and he was a very filthy, um, sexist goat rancher. But it's a very funny account. Uh, don't go read them at, at Mexican Myth. Don't go there on Twitter, at Mexican Myth. Uh, and uh, that's me doing, I do a lot of political parodies, and that's me doing one uh, back in 1994 called Hispanics for Wilson, and we were like a militant self-deportationist. Uh, and we vowed to support a Republican immigration policy by deporting ourselves to Mexico. Uh, and so we ended up on TV on Spanish, on Telemundo. And, they, and apparently in Spanish television, they don't have a word for fact-checking. Because uh, they could have found us out really easily. But uh, This is my book, The Most Perfect Union. Uh, it's a uh, New York Times bestseller. Uh, sadly, I don't have any copies on me. Um, but uh, it's a, a second history book I've done. Um, your style of clothing is bringing shame to our family. <laughs> That's to my people from Zacatecas. <laughs> Today's speech was sponsored by Virgencita Non-Alcoholic Tequila. <laughs> Don't drink, mijo. It makes you see things. <laughs> uh, and uh, Border Town, if anybody uh, remembers the late, great Border Town uh, show that I got to write and produce on. came out on Fox. 13 uh, glorious episodes. Uh, it was just canceled, uh, but um, we're working on other stuff. Uh, but, uh, it was a story set on in the border town of Mexifornia uh, with the racist border patrolman Bud uh, and uh, Ernesto, an uh, upbeat Mexican immigrant. Um, and uh, we, we got to make him from Zacatecas, from the town uh, my dad was from uh, in Zacatecas. And uh, I got to design the, um, I, I didn't draw on the show, I wrote and produced, but I got to design the interior of the Mexican home. So I used every cliche from your abuela's house, you know, the uh, uh, asset calendars, 100 crucifixes, a thousand family photos, uh, plastic covered couches, doilies everywhere, big horse blankets, uh, you know, last supper is supposed to be up there. Uh, and. Uh, my, the crowning achievement was um, <clears throat> my tia used to have uh, a house in San Diego, uh, uh, um, a Victorian house with lots of rooms, and she had uh, beads as cortinas in every room, <laughs> any angle or doorway. And one day she, and they're like these dirty beads from the 70s. And she told me, one day, mijo, when I die, this is going to be your inheritance. <laughs> Thanks. So, but here they are. They made it into border town. Uh, and, uh, and I told the animators, I go, is that, isn't that going to be hard animating all the beads every time they go through the door? And they're like, sir, whatever you want, sir. And we'll put it up there. I said, I like this job. Uh, that's Pepito. He's the uh, son. Uh, that's uh, Pablo Barracuda. The, uh, he's supposed to be like Pablo Escobar, but he's more like, um, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Danny DeVito. <laughs> uh, our show is the first, I think, uh, American primetime TV show with five Latino writers on it. Uh, and uh, there's a bunch of them right there. Uh, doing a read. Uh, that's the show creator. That's Nick Gonzalez. He played Ernesto. Uh, oh, the show creator is uh, Mark Hanneman. Me and him are working on some new shows right now. Uh, that's uh, uh, Nick. 
doing the voices. Uh, that's uh, Missy Pyle doing Gert. Uh, and this guy from a show I'd never heard of <laughs> uh, doing uh, Bud Buckwald, Hank Azaria. Uh, from Family Guy is uh, Alex Borstein. She did the mom on our show. Uh, and that's me doing all the Mexican parts during the table meeting. <laughs> uh, and uh, Coco is the name of the movie I'm consulting for uh, with uh, Pixar. Uh, and uh, I can't really talk about it, but it's the story of tiny white people <laughs> as they enter the land of the dead. Just kidding. This but uh, this, uh, it's the story of a boy, and that's all I can say. <laughs> And uh, a decades-old mystery is solved, and that's all I can say. Uh, but it's going to be really cool, uh, and it's amazing, and Pixar is something else. Uh, I fly up to the Bay Area to work there uh, every couple of weeks. So, uh, and uh, that's my head to scale. <laughs> <laughs> and does anybody have any questions? We have about... Four minutes. <laughs> yes, Jim Luhan. I don't know your name, sir, but I don't know how you guessed that. Um, you have a, a guy that writes you every so often. He, I think it's Jimmy Johnson. Oh, yeah. Uh, he writes you these really wonderful hate letters. Yes. I just want you to clear it up right now publicly for the first time. Is that guy secretly in love with you? <laughs> he wouldn't be the first. Uh, yeah, and I thought you were going to ask, is he for real? Because no, I, I, I get insulted and people say, you're making that up. But you can't make up stuff that stupid. You would have to be that stupid. This guy, Jimmy Johnson, he's, my haters are my best readers. They read me every day. And they write, there's a guy on the syndicate website that writes five paragraphs every time one of my strips. My strips have 50 words in them at most. <laughs> this guy writes 10 words to each word. and Oh my God, it's just crazy. But um, uh, uh, Jimmy Johnson sends me a, 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 reads a strip, sends me a hate email, but he never gets past the subject line. He writes in like, you are stupid, you suck, you cockroach, blah, 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 Trump, forever, blah, blah. And then the body of the text is blank. <laughs> he never goes past that. So it's funny. I post them with from how they look on my phone. It's just like two lines at the top and then a big blank space. So I I attract them. People, my friends are like, dude, you attract the craziest people. That explains you. <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions? I guess mine is the uh, how was Comic Con since you were in that panel. Oh, yeah, Comic-Con was, uh, it was cool. We had the first ever Chicano art uh, kind of body panel at Comic-Con uh, after, you know, how, four years of Comic-Con, I don't know how long. Um, and uh, we're going to try to make it an institution each year. Um, you know, Sergio Aragones has been in, like, every Comic-Con. So There's always been at least Sergio at them. I've gone, I've tried to go for the last 15 years, every year, uh, and they treat me nice. Uh, I have, we had a panel with Mr. Jim Luhan, uh, who is a filmmaker here, and actually got me to do a voice on his movie, Revengeance, uh, which is uh, he's doing with Bill Plimpton, famous uh, indie animator. Uh, and uh, it, I got to be in a movie with uh, M Matthew Modine and Dave Foley. Lalo plays a self-hating Mexican. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bounty hunter. <laughs> Sounds better. <laughs> uh, any other questions, uh, comments, uh, requests, dance moves? Uh, I'm will Border Town come back? Will Border Town come back? Sadly, probably not, but we've already been to Fox to pitch a spin off of it. Um, so you never know. It, uh, there may be something. Uh, and uh, happening, and uh, I'm gonna go back to pitching La Pucaracha as a comic, as a show. Uh, I've only pitched it like eight times and <laughs> failed miserably each time. But uh, I don't know. You, maybe the ninth time is, is a charm. So uh, I'm dedicated to you know having more uh, raza representation in TV uh, and uh, and film. So uh, all you can do is my boss told me. Uh, uh, my boss from the show, he, I, uh, he said, hey, let's go pitch a show at Fox. Man, I got an idea. Uh, I go, all right, but 
I go, I said, gee, you sound really optimistic for a guy whose amazing show just got canceled. He said, dude, you can't think like that, man. You have to in, uh, enjoy the process, you know, make cartoons, write the, the, the stories for them, go pitch them, enjoy that, because 99% uh, of TV shows fail. Uh, so you'll end up to being, being a bitter old writer uh, if you like, get pissed off every time Hollywood steps on your head because they like stepping on people's heads, you know? So uh, the, the key to success is just like being the last man standing. Uh, so, you know, that's why I look both ways when I cross the street. <laughs> I don't want to be that old guy that gets run down from the street. Uh, you guys, thank you very much. I think uh, we're good. Please come to my table. It's over there. Thank you for coming. LCX.